change and transform us to light. Lord, I know that you will do this for the sake of your glory. We surrender all to you. Let this place remain a place of healing, a place of deliverance, a place of transformation, a place where men meet with the King. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because it's by the power of the Holy Ghost, no man is able to do this. Week after week, we gather in your presence. I pray in the name of Jesus that you help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let tonight not be an ordinary night, O oh God. Change our destinies. Change our destinies. We declare how much we love you and how much we need you. We appreciate the things that you are doing in our midst. We refuse to take for granted the miracles and the manifestations of your grace. We come with hearts of gratitude. And Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is your house. Your we welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house. Your This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Lord, we welcome you today. Lord, we welcome you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never, never take for granted what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. Every time you come for this meeting, realize that it's an opportunity for you to meet with you. Hallelujah. So that you don't just come and not receive. We want you to leave with something that will make a mark in your life. In the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone around you. Thank you for coming. Please hug someone.
man, including the soothsayers and the magicians, could interpret it. Hallelujah. One of the greatest assets that we need in these days as believers is to contend for that place in the spirit where we are able to interpret the handwritings that are on the wall so that we can understand the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. We can understand the pathways in the spirit. And this is what we seek to enforce in this place. All the principles that we teach in this place, all of the times of prayer and impartation, is to open us to that point in the spirit where we are able to relate with spiritual things. For the Bible says, the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because it takes a level of discernment in the spirit to interpret it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I was excited when the Lord asked me to share what I'm about to share tonight. Because I believe that someone's life will never be the same in Jesus' name. blessings of God. Hallelujah. And eventually the congregations begin to ask questions and say is, is God not interested in our personal well-being? Is he just interested in using us for his glory? Is he just interested in watching us pray and fast, you know, interceding for souls and so on and so forth? Is he just interested in seeing us serve him? What package has he designed? Is he insensitive to our needs? Is he unaware of the challenges that our families have? Hallelujah. Is he aware that there are doors that have been closed over families and destinies? If yes, is he interested in doing anything about it? Hallelujah. And it's important that as we minister to God's people, 
we open them up to everything that can be obtained in God. By God's grace, we teach you prayer. We teach you how to walk in the world. We teach you how to live in obedience to God. But we must also expose you to the dimensions of God that can release breakthroughs in your life. Hallelujah. That's why we take testimonies every week. As a symbol of what God is doing in the lives of his people. Because you see, when you receive personal results in your life, you are motivated to follow God. That may not be your primary reason, but it can motivate you. Is that true? When, when you receive phone calls like the gentleman who just shared, where's the gentleman that shared about his mom? You can imagine. Now he comes for the meeting and then while he's sitting under the at atmosphere of God's presence, his mom gets healed somewhere. Hallelujah. Do you believe this guy has been motivated to press more into God? Believers are motivated if you see he said when John the Baptist said that they should ask Jesus Christ if he was the Messiah he didn't answer the disciples he just turned and began to heal the sick began to do miraculous things and then when he was done he told John he told the disciples say go and tell John what you have seen in other words the kingdom of God should find visible expression the kingdom of God represents the entirety of God's sovereignty his power if God is as powerful as we preach if God is as great if he's as loving and caring as we teach then don't you think that at a point in your life your life should experience some testimonies that can encourage you that you can have a message for yourself and say I have seen the hand of God in my life I have seen the intervention of God I've seen breakthroughs in my families and I told God something I said Lord I never want to be part of a ministry that does not have results hallelujah I don't want to just come and deceive God's people and it's not enough just to fall down and stand up if you're falling down it's not producing results you will get angry one day hallelujah but thank God we have a God that is alive and is doing wonders in our midst. Hallelujah. So I'm sharing on activating breakthroughs. In my personal life and in my journey in the spirit, there are four things that characterize seasons of breakthrough in a man's life. Please take this teaching very seriously. Four things. Every time a man is about to step into prophetic defining moments moments of breakthrough I'm not just talking of one testimony here realms of breakthrough where God is about to step into a life and truly do something notable there are four things that happen when you approach that season of your life I'm teaching you this so that you can know and relate with these seasons when they come hallelujah again one of the things I learned watching the film Lord of the Rings is the fact that they were warriors from different kingdoms and what made these people warriors was not just the ability to fight but the ability to understand seasons hallelujah when other men just stumbled into seasons those men could look and discern I remember one of them looking and seeing a red cloud and he said blood had been shed in the night the ability to look when other people are just looking you are standing from a plane in the spirit and you are saying this has happened because something is happening the wise men hallelujah the wise men saw a star and while other people were saying ah why is the earth shining like this they understood that this is a message in the realm of the spirit that they ought to respond to hallelujah so while the star was supposed to lead men to where jesus was some other people just looked and they were moving around and they were happy yet others were taking advantage of the seasons so i don't just want you to interpret the happenings around life from an earth realm hallelujah I want you to be able to see prophetic things that when you see handwritings on the wall you don't just pass it many people have missed out on seasons of breakthrough because
because they have not been taught to discern moments of breakthrough in their life many families would have risen from where they are from where they are into the prophetic destiny that god has for them but because they do not know how to understand spiritual things so follow me tonight four things number one when a major season of breakthrough is about to open up in your life the first thing that happens is that there is an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer an unusual impartation of the spirit of prayer whenever you begin to sense an irresistible urge to pray an irresistible urge to pray not just to pray with in a group know that these are prophetic signposts these are languages in the spirit that are pointing to you that you are about to step into a major season of breakthrough and i will explain to you why these things happen spirit of prayer how many of you have sat down and suddenly you cannot tell it's not like you are not prayerful but maybe over a period of three or four days or one week you cannot rest you are praying every time you are partnering with what is happening in the realm of the spirit you may not even know but because you have yielded yourself to the holy spirit the holy spirit must not always speak to you his ultimate um desire is to lead you not just to speak to you that your body comes to a point where even without speaking to you you can permit him out what the bible says the holy ghost drove jesus to the wilderness he didn't say jesus let's go jesus's body was so yielded to the holy ghost that he just found himself moving at the impulse of the holy spirit and the bible says the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell where it's coming or where it's going such is one who is led of the spirit so every time you are about to step into prophetic seasons of you know what a breakthrough is a breakthrough is when the barrier that is limiting you from stepping into the next level of your life is about to be lifted or is lifted that's a breakthrough when there is a stronghold when there is a mountain when there is a limitation when there is a resistance that would not allow you to push through to that next level of life in destiny by whatever spiritual agency when that barrier is lifted we call it a breakthrough so number one what the spirit of prayer suddenly you see someone who may not even pray for an hour but you find out that there is grace to pray grace to pray while you're praying it's like there's an endless supply while you're praying you can sense in the spirit that things are happening you cannot tell what it is that is happening but you know that the more you press your prayer is doing something and is having an effect in your spirit directly sometimes you begin to pray and you get to a point in your spirit where you can even start laughing i'm not talking of laughing in the spirit joy that you cannot explain because a chord is being hit in the spirit but many people when they get to that point because they do not know the significance of that dimension of prayer they do not partner with the angels to bring in complete breakthroughs and they go back and miss out on cycles and seasons of breakthrough that would have come are you getting blessed number two when you are about to enter a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life the second thing that happens is an unusual grace to give When you are about to step into those prophetic seasons suddenly you lose value of everything around you you just know that i can give anything and it won't matter again when that begins to happen to you take note have you gotten to a point where you sit down and just look at your clothes and you can carry about 20 or 30 percent of them and just say i'm going to sew it and i tell you there is a dissociation between you and those things is because you are about to step into you see how many of you have missed out on such seasons because you did not know how to take advantage if you could take advantage of it you would have stepped into major seasons of breakthroughs this that i'm teaching you is born out of the word of god and practical experience.
experiences hallelujah there are many of you who can just be walking and the next thing god tells you go for a retreat quick you're supposed to travel god just summons you and says go for a retreat the moment that happens make sure nothing is too important to make you cancel that appointment hallelujah because that's not just your normal prayer for spiritual growth it is a call to contend with the things in the heavens so that you will step into a prophetic season in your life so number one the spirit of prayer an unusual urge to pray to travel in the spirit you just find yourself blessing the lord You are sleeping in the night and God wakes you. That sleep cannot come back again. And you are just praying in the spirit. That's a sign that a door is about to open for you in the spirit. But many of you wake up. And when you see your colleague sleeping. Just say, Kai. Let me just. 15 minutes exactly. By the grace of God I won't add 15 minutes. You even put one leg down on your bed. So that you can wake up. And you wake up and see that it's six o'clock. And you see, the Holy Spirit does not struggle with the human spirit. Are you listening to me? Because it's not a demon. The moment he begins to communicate to you, it's a language in the spirit. He's telling you, watch this. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Can you stand? So that you will step into this major season. Hallelujah. Number two, an unusual urge to give not just i'm not just talking of giving money alone but suddenly you get to the point where nothing that you have is like a stream that connects the things that you have and you is suddenly broken away from your life and you know at that point if god asks you to empty your bank account or if god asks you to give anything you can lose it including your family members it's not like you don't love them I'm just giving you languages in the spirit. You know that there's nothing, nothing. And you find out that you know that by the kind of songs you sing in your place of prayer. You begin to sing songs of surrender and commitment. You don't even know why you are singing those songs. Have they ever raised a song for you and you know this is not the song that communicates what God is saying. It's not bad, but mm -mm, this is not the song. Hallelujah. When you step in church and they just sing a song, we can sing a powerful song like um, more of you more of you it's nice but it doesn't strike a chord in your spirit and even you you think you are backsliding no no you just sit down you are not you are not connecting you are even feeling guilty about it you are wondering why you are not connecting hallelujah then suddenly they raise another song I lay it all down again and you start crying you don't even know what is happening. It's a reaction to a season that your spirit is relating with. The moment they begin to sing that so anything that has to do with laying it down, forgetting about it, you know, your spirit picks it up and that's the song you're just singing. May not make sense to you, but you are getting into defining moments that will open up prophetic seasons of breakthrough getting blessed tonight number three when you are about to step into major seasons of breakthrough i mean major seasons number three there will be an unusual confrontation from the kingdom of darkness suddenly you notice that it's as if all hell is breaking loose over you as if the satan i mean the devil just told all the demons say look just leave everybody chase Wumi. find Wumi anywhere you see her and look for her hallelujah have you seen people like that so it looks like the more they are praying for you the issue is getting worse hold on that's the time to begin to see from the realm of the spirit 
because many people are taught to judge these things do you know why you see satan does not know your future but the moment a prophetic word is uttered what happens there is an unusual manifestation of angelic activities suddenly it sends a signal in the realm of the spirit what because they know that satan knows he was an angel before i hope you know so he knows that every time there is an unusual dispatch of angels something is about to be translated from the realm of the spirit into this realm hallelujah and suddenly confrontations from the power of darkness they begin to bring arrows of discouragement impatience procrastination offense suddenly you find out that a major season is about to enter your family and your father and mother are quarreling for trivial issues why did you bring the tea in this green cup is this the cup i use every day and you are wondering you are like daddy what is this whole thing if you learn to judge from the spirit you see why you start by unusual ability to pray because there will be contentions are you getting blessed tonight suddenly you are just getting offended with people for reasons they cannot tell someone looks at you and say beautiful hair he say, hey, mock me ah, even you you are finding what is wrong people say you are being so edgy you are being offensive what is wrong say even me i don't know what is happening but god is telling you go and pray because you are stepping into prophetic moments are you listening to me the powers of darkness are finding access points that they can step into your life and on legal grounds hinder what god wants to do are you seeing why praise is a tool for victory you see why god will give you are you seeing that this is why sometimes when breakthroughs are about to come god will distract you with praise so that before you realize the breakthrough can come so you lock yourself and you are just dancing in it you don't even know why you are dancing because with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation many people have lost it at this point suddenly you find out that everybody is just offending you you are about to go and pray you are sensing in your spirit and somebody comes and says let me tell you something selena um, i wouldn't have told you but well, let me tell you do you know what your sister said and you're like what again these are dangerous seeds that that will stop you from entering prophetic moments of your life hallelujah or you are about to go and pray and then a call comes and your mother says do you know what happened there was an accident in your dreams you are seeing your family members rejoicing you haven't seen them cutting cake in the physical you are hearing that one car has at such times many people just dampen their spirits the bible says for as long as the hands of moses kept it, it was up what happened there was victory when aaron and all were tired and they began to bring the hand what happened how can a man's hand control the victory that is happening in a war front many people do not understand spiritual pathways and i'm telling you the more you have this knowledge the more you will reign in life unusual confrontations in fact for some of you they may even be direct confrontations you're just walking out for the first time you hear a voice saying you will die you will die and you carry that mindset it's a seed that the devil wants to sow into your life that's the day you got up and found out that your shirts that they eye on your roommate why is hey god let me kill somebody today where is she prophetic moments notice that the moment that season is aborted all those disturbances just minimize and you can live your normal life are you are you listening to me prophetic seasons and then number four number four is suddenly attract certain people called destiny helpers destiny helpers there will be
prophetic unusual encounters please let me have two people my God open our eyes tonight teach us mysteries in the spirit come you stand up here Kenny Sam just stand down hallelujah watch this this is a level look up everybody this is a level is that correct this gentleman wants to step into this level and he has been walking now he has gotten to this prophetic shift hallelujah while he's praying and fasting this is what happens can i have a third person anybody thank you person. suddenly god yes just be coming and god comes and causes you to intercept at the exact time with certain people he calls destiny helpers their job hold his hands is to help you and guide you to step up and they will leave Sam you climb, climb up for me go back that's their job sometimes they will come into your life just once and you may never see them again follow me tonight God bless you sirs four things happen to believers this is the structure of God's kingdom hallelujah when Jesus was going to go and bring a major breakthrough to a man who was possessed of devils and to go and preach in Gadara what happened they were in the boat in, the, in, the, in their boat is that correct suddenly the sea started getting boisterous question was that the first time they were going by sea I hope you realize that the sea was not just boisterous. It was the demons, the legions of devils that were in the man at Gadara that were reacting, attempting to stop them from coming. Hallelujah. Notice, did you notice that the disciples started getting angry at Jesus Christ? They got offended. They said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? When Jesus woke up, he knew that he needed to calm them down and he said, Shalom. What happened? The Bible tells us that that madman used to stay in caves. Who told him Jesus was coming? Because the moment Jesus stepped into Gadara, he was there waiting. He was the first person he met. Hallelujah. Did you hear the lady that came to share the testimony about her father? That how can a man be having accidents every morning? I don't watch so much of football but when you are in a serious match I don't mean friendly it's just to shake yourself and change jerseys real match that can change the destiny of a nation hallelujah when you are about to score what happens the people they tell them do everything walking killing just do everything stop this guy from score you find out that the hostility increases because at that point a single goal can make the difference are you understanding this many people and many families have missed out on cycles it's like a spiritual cycle when you miss it it will come back but it will come back immediately so your job is to stand and discern when you see that cloud moving you begin to walk with the holy ghost to make preparations for the things that God wants to release hallelujah I'll not talk about the first three I'll talk very briefly about the last one destiny help us who are these men who are these strange beings that seem to come to, to, to stand by people in the path of destiny please write destiny help us are men and women that we find on our road to breakthroughs our road to destiny who provide help for the next level of our lives our miracles and our destiny there are men that we meet on our path to destiny I'm going to be showing you from God's word and you'll see how consistent this is say in the name of Jesus I activate breakthroughs in my life the Bible says in the book of Genesis 41 
if you turn there the story of Joseph look up please Joseph had a great destiny is that correct he had a dream and he told his brothers he said brothers I saw you people bowing to me the brothers said you see we'll kill you before that will happen and they sold him is that correct do you realize let me show you all the people that played a role in that journey the Bible says it was at the time he entered the well that certain Egyptians were passing why did they not pass before or after forget the fact that they bought him but they were the vehicles that transported him he didn't pay transport fare they transported him into where Potiphar's house do you know that Egypt was his geographical location of breakthrough are you listening to me so how was he going to go there his father would never allow him to go to Egypt I hope you know and so certain Egyptians in the name of buying him while they were carrying him he did not know that prophetically there were angels and activities that were pushing him to the place of destiny hold on when he gets to Egypt the Bible says that he went into the prison now watch this every time you are about to take a journey into destiny before you start God will show you something that you will hold in that journey for Moses it is a rod for Joseph it is a dream God will say note it one day we'll make reference with you will never start your journey without knowing what he gave you many of us have thrown it that jar is it, it, no good because it does not look for Moses he said you hold this rod a day will come when he got to that point in the Red Sea he said remember the rod now Moses stretch that rod a time has come for the ministry of that rod to come in hallelujah for Joseph he had nothing but a simple dream a simple dream are you following me tonight he had a simple dream and while these guys were taking did he like it but he was going to the geography of his breakthrough when he got there what happened and this is the sign because while he was going the Bible says God was with him this is how you know God is with you because even in the midst of these things you see favor the favor and the grace of God and the Bible says he went into prison what happened he was faithful and Potiphar made him the head of everything except his wife watch this then comes this dangerous woman who sees this handsome Egyptian hallelujah and on account of his work with God and his loyalty to his master what happened the Bible says he ran and he left his clothes there do you know if Joseph had slept with her he would have just been happy and gone back to the prison in the evening and he would have remained there who know that he slept with her but he would have remained in the prison there hallelujah and the Bible says Joseph was in the prison and God made it in such a way that it was when Joseph was coming to the prison that the wine presser and the baker for some reasons they annoyed the king the king said go and lock them the king let's explain say, go and lock them and while they locked them there then Joseph steps in watch this he looks at them and Joseph is worried about their state they woke up in the morning and the Bible says their countenance was very bad hallelujah and the wine presser said I have a dream why did God create a need that only the gift in Joseph could solve are you following me now God knew that he had given Joseph grace for dreams then he created that need and the wine presser got up please listen he said and that happened and Joseph told him he said wow in three days the king is going to call you back and you'll be reinstated to your position the guy laughed he said please when you go don't forget me the other guy said ah me too I have my own no. he said what is wrong 
said there were three baskets on my head and vultures came and ate everything Joseph said well in three days they will finally finish up your case they will bring you out and they will go and hang you and the birds of the air will eat up your flesh watch this Joseph did not know that those two people they did not have gift but they had access to the king that could bring Joseph are you seeing destiny helpers may not be gifted people but they have access you have the gift but you don't have access to the king they have access to the king but they may not have the gifts hallelujah it came to pass like that and after the wine presser was reinstated the bible says he forgot joseph but watch this when it was time for joseph to step into the place of destiny what happened god now since the one the wine presser forgot him I'm sure Joseph would have been disappointed. You now see that he would have been angry and said, Oh, two years. This guy kept me in this captivity and I helped him. But something happened. The Bible says that God gave the king a dream. You see it now? When God is ready to lift you, those who matter, he will give them a problem they cannot solve and shut every door until your gift answers to it. That's how God lifts a man. Please listen, I'm teaching you a powerful mystery. Because every king, they had sorcerers and soothsayers. This is Egypt we are talking about. Egypt had thousands of gods they could consult. But that day, God shut the heavens. The magicians did everything. The heavens would not open. And the king said, you better answer my dream. You better find the solution. Kings were cruel people those days. They could wipe out the whole land because they were angry. Suddenly, the magicians consulted and said, What is happening? They said, We don't know. And then the wine presser said something. Watch this 41, verse 9. 41, verse 9. I'm reading from the NIV. Are you there? Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. So after two years, the man remembered. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in prison. In the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. Listen. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dreams. Listen. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, now hold on. Do you know, while all of this was happening, Joseph did not know that he was at the edge are you listening to me if he had missed a defining moment he would have remained in that prison sometimes could it be that you are just a night away to a major breakthrough in your life have you heard that song i was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it powerful song many believers have gotten to the edge and then Satan comes into something that aborts the whole journey. Thirteen, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Now listen. If Joseph had his way, listen. If Joseph had his way, and he ever met Pharaoh once, do you know Pharaoh would be so impressed with Joseph that you say, "Why are you in the prison in the first place?" But sometimes, three, see the irony see a gifted person who graduated and he's so good and here is somebody who is a blessed man who needs that gift but the, that contact are you listening to me there are many of our loved ones that are gifted i heard the story of a gentleman who fan caught his some of his fingers and then suddenly it was like an anointing came upon him and that guy could draw you know um, fine art students he could do what they call it um, abstract on the wall praise God and then this guy had been praying to God and said Lord give my family a major breakthrough because his mother told him I didn't go to school your hands are cut but do something go and learn something and this guy was praying watch this when that was happening the Holy Ghost began to give him ideas he said begin to do your abstract on plenty papers and store them every time you see this guy drawing people are saying your colleagues are going out to look for a job he said but God told me this watch this 
suddenly one day he went to visit his friend huh? when he went to visit his friend his friend was talking with someone and it so happened that they just opened the branch this is a true story they opened the branch of a bank you know banks do abstract on their wall and they had been looking for someone the person who used to do it for the bank he did something nasty and the bank got angry with him and suddenly they just say ah but don't you draw the guy came there with his file he was ready they said meet us so 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 please and he went do you know that that day he got a contract of over four million naira overnight why hold on it wasn't just because the people that connected him did not even know the gravity of what they were doing do you realize that your destiny helpers do not know their destiny helpers god conceals it so that they will not corrupt what he's trying to do through them the destiny helpers themselves never know their destiny helpers until the miracle happens one day when you are saying it the wine presser if the wine presser knew that he was sitting close to someone who would be the prime minister of of egypt you think you treat him the way he treated him hallelujah and then let me rush they call joseph i like i like i like the way let's look at um verse 14 Are you there? 41 verse 14. And Pharaoh sent, listen. Pharaoh sent at the recommendation of who? A destiny helper, the wine presser. The wine presser said, I testify that there was a time I needed help. Hallelujah. And a Hebrew guy called Joseph. By this time, do you know what it means to stay two years in the prison without shaving? Without you don't have the luxury of shaving and this you do looking like a, a native doctor. And the Bible says, I'll show you from scripture. Verse 14 and Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of where the dungeon is only your destiny partners that can connect you to come out of some dungeons you may be gifted but you will remain in some dungeons until some destiny partners come do you know that many of our family members they are praying in tongues and they are gifted let me announce to everybody here there is something you have that is in desperate demand the distance between you and your place of honor is a destiny helper if you never find this destiny helpers you can die a failure in life i've seen this happen so many times hallelujah when we we're about to get the venue for this place when god began to speak to us about coin on here we're praying you know how difficult it is to get venue hallelujah we were even looking for a place to pay for and I began to pray I began to pray and I had a number of options and when I was praying the Lord showed me said you will use CGC I really didn't know I administered only once or twice in the ministry I said Lord how can you use people's auditorium and then you start and God said you hold on but he had taught me the ministry of destiny helpers so I knew better are you following me now and I knew which two random foolish prayer pointless arrow you have AK-47 you're just shooting everywhere you need to direct with target that's what many believers are doing we just pray but we do not know the bible says through wise counsel make war you can you can minimize wasting bullets many people just pray everywhere as they pray to wherever you are letting me to come down you can walk with wisdom and walk circumspectly i began to pray because I knew that all I needed was a destiny. Do you know it does not take more than 24 hours for God to change a man's story. God just needs to bring a man. Your father has been praying. He's a good architect. And there are people begging. Begging. They want to build estates. They are begging. Can there be something that will happen in the realm of the spirit? See, there's no time I would have given you stories of how people's lives have changed overnight. I hope you believe what I'm teaching tonight. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Joseph 
Joseph. The Bible says, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh and said, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Hallelujah. And then he interprets the dream. Verse 32. It's amazing when your gift begins to speak in the place where it is honored. Do you know something? Listen. Your gift will never speak in a place they don't value and honor it. Hallelujah. That's why you can see someone who is a worshiper. He goes somewhere to minister. It's not the place of his own. They don't even honor it but you can step into another place your gift will always create an effect where it was designed to be honored always hallelujah 32 and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass look at the ease at which joseph was interpreting this dream and the magicians were all watching. God orchestrated an event where all the all the Senate members of Egypt were gathered and they were listening. See, listen. Whenever God begins to prepare a table before you, learn to discern from the Spirit because He will be taking you to a place you never dreamed of. He'll lead me and guide me to the city up above he'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny i know he leads me and he guides me to the city up above lord you lead me and guide me to my place of destiny hallelujah 33 now therefore let pharaoh seek out a man he didn't know he was talking about himself desperate and wise and set him over the land of egypt let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh and let him keep food for the cities. Just jump verse 39. This is where man's breakthrough comes. After 12 years of misery, being transported into his destiny by people he did not like, facing situations he did not know were orchestrating themselves for his lifting. 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown ye all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art immediately without prayer without fasting help me read verse 41 to read and thou shalt be over my house no interview no meeting with any council member kings did not make stupid decisions they met with their wise men but the king announced he vetoed it thou shalt be over my house and according to unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than you 41 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt five minutes ago a prisoner five minutes later the prime minister my god how can you explain this the people who shaved him say so we were shaving the prime minister the people who dressed him and imagine pharaoh who took him to the prison i mean potiphar now he had become lord imagine what potiphar's house wife would do hear me friends god is in the business of changing the lives and the stories of men and of families it does not cost him so much all you need is the man that requires what god has given you he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above. Your mother has a large poultry farm. There is a major hotel that is being constructed. 
one manifestation of destiny helpers at a recommendation they can begin to say madam begin to supply this hotel for as long as the hotel leaves see friends every man i know who has been blessed in any area of life got to a point in his life where he was led by destiny helpers to enter fearful mind-blowing and irrecoverable parts of destiny let's look at jesus we call him the king of kings we call him the lord of lords but let's see all the people that play different parts in the life of jesus did you know the bible says i don't know if i should read it all right let's read it luke 2 let's hurry up because we're going to do some prayer this night hallelujah prayer this night i shared it with the leaders on sunday god began to speak to me that a breakthrough anointing is coming upon the house in a very 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 significant way and we prayed in that light Luke 2 verse 25 Luke 2 verse 25 this is a story of Jesus are you there and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and the same man was a righteous and devoted man waiting for the consolation of israel and the holy spirit was upon him and it was revealed unto him by the holy spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the lord jesus hold on look up this guy called simeon hallelujah the bible says god told him he would not see death his job was to wait until he prophesies into the life of jesus before he would die are you seeing we don't hear the names of all these people in scripture tonight I want to show you people who took the destiny of Jesus and passed the button for him to become our savior hallelujah and then he prayed and prophesied let's look at verse 36 so one destiny helper we see in the life of Jesus Simeon number 2 36 now and there was one Anna listen to how the Bible describes her what does he call her one Anna. Hold on. He said one Anna. And one Anna. There was one Anna. Hold on. But without that one Anna, there will be no Jesus. There will be no redemption of mankind. There was one Anna, a prophetess. The daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. He said, and she was of a great age and had lived with, with a husband seven years from her virginity. Seven years and the man died. So what was she doing with the remaining part of her life? Let's read on. And she was a widow about four score and four, 84 years. So for all that remaining time, 84 years, the Bible says, who departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer night and day. And she coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for the redemption of Israel. She was the woman who was praying that Jesus be born. Are you seeing that? There was a woman behind the scene, a destiny helper, praying and fasting at age 84 that Jesus, will, that, that what has been prophesied. Let me tell you, if there were no people to pray, they would have killed Jesus because the people would not be sensitive to angelic activities. They would have killed him and there would not be redemption for mankind. Destiny helpers. We don't honor them. The Bible never talks about Simeon again. The Bible never talks about Anna again. Are you following me, please? Destiny help us. At the death of Jesus, the Bible says, listen, that when Jesus had carried the cross, he had bled so much, and the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. He carried the cross to the point that this was him and the place that would bring redemption for mankind. But there was no more strength. And what happened? He fell. At the point where he was falling, one black man meandered that road called Simon of Cyrene. Are you following me now? And they said, Simon, come. They didn't ask him whether he had eaten or not. They didn't ask him where he was going. They just said, Mr. Man, pick up this cross. What happened? A destiny helper. He carried the cross. Cruel men 
no devil can resist your destiny help us if you these were men who would not allow jesus to drink water but they allowed a man to carry his cross for him and simon helped jesus and so jesus could regain some strength the bible says that when jesus died there was another strange rich man called joseph of arimathea he had a virgin tomb because the prophets had been had prophesied that none of his bones would be broken and that he would be buried in a tomb that is virgin so god had led one man to buy a grave how can a man buy a tomb and keep it for his own death he didn't even know why he bought it remember when jesus wanted to come in the triumphant entry the bible says a man had tied a coat he didn't tell us the man he said go and tell the man the master had need at once he released the coat are you seeing all the people that played parts when you watch your jesus of nazareth they silence those people and so you don't even know you just see jesus but without these people in his life the bible talked about the wise men once didn't tell us anything about them again it talked about the shepherds didn't tell us anything about them again now joseph of Arimathea. the bible says joseph of Arimathea was an influential man it was on account of his influence so a rich man was required for the redemption of men he was the rich man that used his influence and went and said give me the body of this man let me bury if not they would have left jesus to hang on the cross there are you listening to me now we don't follow up these stories very well and they took him to a virgin tomb and they laid him there look at all the people that played roles in the life of jesus christ moses another man the bible says when they were killing hebrew children you remember his mother put him in a basket the word moses means to come out of a basket the mother put him in a basket and do you know that she put a hebrew material in the basket and pushed him how can a mother that was a sign of desperation she said let me just push him oh god guide him suddenly the water started leading moses to a place for no reason pharaoh's daughter just said i'm not taking my bath don't they have bathrooms here? i will go to the street this street at the exact point where the baby was coming that was when she was bathing and the bible says she had the sound of a child she would have said go and kill him when she saw it she started laughing her father gives an instruction to kill people the daughter is saving the major person who they were supposed to kill destiny help us look at the drama that happens in the spirit your father gives an instruction it was really moses they were looking for but now moses was in the house and they were killing other people that was the deliverer the mother a hebrew woman she didn't have much but do you know what happened when they pushed moses the daughter got and then the maid of the mother came and suggested say do you want a nanny they said of course he went and brought moses's mother to come and be a nanny for her own son and they paid her for it destiny help us i want you to see that this is no coincidence at all no threat moses grew up he ate well he was nourished no joint this no nonsense because there was an assignment waiting for him he was in perfect shape hallelujah have you been taking note of certain people many of us have been cheated because we have neglected this strange sets of people we live in a generation where all we are looking for is men of god could it be that after the prophecy from the men of god there are ordinary people some of you come for koinonia and you sit down close to the person who can suggest something to you that will change your life forever are you getting blessed the bible tells us that a man called saul was persecuting christians everywhere and having met with god with jesus christ on the road to damascus he said he should go to the house of who judas and stay there who is that judas we don't know he just said go and stay in his house destiny help us he's 
stayed there three days. And then they sent a man called Ananias. We heard about him once, didn't hear about him again. And Ananias came and said, Brother Saul, Jesus whom you saw sent me, that I should lay my hands upon you, that you should be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive your sight. When that happened, he went away. The Bible says a certain time came, they met one prophet called Agabus. He came out from wherever we don't know. A man called Agabus. All his daughters were prophets. And he gave a prophecy. Hallelujah. You read all through the Bible and see several people. Ruth and Naomi haven't lost her husband, haven't lost everything. The Bible says that Ruth told Naomi, say, my God will be your God. And my, your God will be my God, your people, my people. And the Bible says, while they stood, a man just came out from wherever. told the people, we don't know who those people are, he said as you clean leave some of the food, their names were not mentioned, just leave some food so that she can go and take care brothers and sisters if you miss the ministry of destiny helpers in your life listen to me you may never arrive your destiny no matter what kind of prophecy is given unto you there are many women who will not get married As we praise your holy name, you deserve the glory. What happens? While Sam is moving left and right, doing the business of the Father, suddenly Sam finds out that he's been drawn to this room. Sam will move this way, and Sam will be drawn. And then a preacher like me will say, Talk to your neighbor and say, It's your time to be blessed. And Sam turns and says, your time to be blessed. And the Holy Ghost will say, did you hear what you said? <laughs> Hallelujah. A few years after they are happily married. And when you ask them, what happened? They say, someone. That's what they say. Someone. The someone may be in the congregation. But may not even know that he or she was the person. Who made this happen? Are you listening to me? destiny help us many people have missed out every time you are entering a prophetic season of breakthrough in your life make sure you begin to handle with utmost respect the people that begin to come around you because some of them may not even be Christians somebody can just come drunk with beer it may even be your loved one and for the first time you will say something sensible in years you say ah you didn't go for fellowship this night then you hiss and go back and God will saw your address as you are coming in that's when God will step into your life in a mighty way hallelujah men who do not know these principles die as failures in life and wonder oh God why are you not changing my story Hallelujah. This is very important. I have seen this happen in my life. When God showed me that this would be the venue, 
how it was going to happen I knew listen the next time you are trusting God for a breakthrough in your life don't think he's just going to come by an angel flapping his wings and says take men men have been God's instrument of breakthrough hallelujah are you receiving something tonight am I challenging you Adamu, Adamu, how are you? Well done, man. How are you? You are insulting the man. One day you look and say, sorry. I saw one application. There's one newspaper here. You say, let me see. And you just find out that they need exactly what you want. And it will change your life and your story forever. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I was told the story of a lady who had been trusting God for breakthrough. Hallelujah. And the day they called her, for a job interview in all sincerity she did not have any money the mom did not have money there and it was her neighbor who was a gate man she begged him it took a lot of humility for her to beg him guys say give me my money i said make sure you give me and i think he gave her was it 500 or 200 she transported herself got that job when she got the job they were going to lodge her in a five-star hotel for one month first where they would take her are you listening to me? Gave her 0.8 million to be able to get a nice house. This is true life story. Hallelujah. All that lady, that lady bought a bike and came and gave the gate man. The gate man was resting. Little did he know his breakthrough was coming. She just gave him a bike. He left the work immediately. Immediately. Many of you in life, listen to me. This is a powerful message. Many of you in life have neglected certain people. You may stand and look at this brother and just say kind I beg Jerry many of us relate with people only based on what we can get from them you need to stop that demonic attitude the day I don't need anything from you you are not my friend again the day necessity brings it suddenly ah pastor Femi we need venue you are his friend if that is your attitude you will miss out on many prophetic and see someone, the person is wearing a shoe that is not very nice. Thank God for the 10,000 naira one your father bought for you. The person may not have what you have, but he has and he knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that can open the door that your family has. Every prayer point has a human being as the answer somewhere. Every prayer point. Every prayer point. I tell you if you are praying for a job that job is available somewhere and it is at a platter of gold. One note can change a man's destiny. Activate
activating breakthroughs to the ministry of destiny help us could this be why some of us are where we are today could it be that that's why some of our family members are where we are the gentleman that always comes to your father and your father says don't tell him that I'm around could it be that that very day he came with a news that will set the family forever and the person will live and go forever we are going to be praying hallelujah we are going to be crying for a restoration of destiny help us that we have allowed to slip to our hands we are going to be praying for sensitivity many of you treat everybody bad you treat people rude you are hostile you talk to people you say that's how I am because you feel you have your world met together a day will come you will find out that what you have you don't have access to a king and it is God that will connect you there hallelujah today by the grace of God many places where I go and minister I don't know those who told them about me they just said we heard about you who were the people who popped the Bible said it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town we do not know. I only will pray for those people in my secret place that God will bless and honor them. You may never know. Never know. Sometimes we just get seeds from people coming into the ministry account. We don't even know the people. Could it be that one destiny helper shared his testimony one day? Are you listening to me? See, I am convinced that it does not cost God a fortune to cause a major prophetic breakthrough in your family. I was told about a man who had been saving to buy some cars, you know, he just a little car. And then one day, when he was going to buy the car, God sent him to go and um, greet, you know, like the elder ones, like an uncle. So when he went to go and greet the uncle, he was sitting outside. These are true stories. He was sitting outside. And then a rich man came in to see the uncle. And then he told him, he said he should wash his car for him. And he started washing the car. Of course, he sounded insulting. But then that's a big man. He was washing the car. Then when he was washing the car, the uncle didn't see for hours they were just in. He washed the car, cleaned it, and sat down. He was even getting angry. When they came out, the uncle was hostile to him. He said, why have you come to see me? Don't you see that I have meetings? The, the rich man asked him, he said, what is it? He said, I just came to tell you that I gathered some small money. I want to buy a car. And then the rich man asked, just jokingly, he said, what car? He said, God, the man loved. He said, is that a car? He said, the next day you should come and meet him in his office. I'm telling you, I lie not. He gave him a brand new Toyota the next day. See, let me tell you something. It's not everything that money can do. Learn this early enough. Because many people brag with the monies of their parents. My father is a senator. My mother is a this. There are many people were healed in koinonia here we still do not know who brought them someone referred them on the road told them do this do that and they came and they got healed i made up my mind never to that's why i treat people with love and honor and respect you don't know who it could be a little girl like this my sister she may just look at you and pray a prayer for you and say God just asked me to touch your head and just touch your head and say bless you suddenly you see every door opening and you are like what in the world is going on hallelujah are you getting blessed sometimes God can lead you to a meeting you don't know the name of the ministry you don't know the name of the man of God you don't know the name of anybody you don't know the ushers that brought you all you know is that one word was declared you carry that word, you went back. Most times, you never get to see your destiny help us to tell them thank you. There are only few times you get to meet them. Four things that define prophetic moments of breakthrough. Number one, the spirit of prayer. Grace to pray like never before. Number two, a heart to Suddenly, there is a dissociation between you and whatever it is that you have. Number three, demonic confrontations. 
that attempt to discourage you. Number four, they begin to come. Destiny help us. They come as phone calls. They come as friends. They come as enemies. They come as unprofitable situations. They come as hostile different things. forget someone who had an issue with his supervisor for a year student some years ago he had a very serious issue with the supervisor and the supervisor would not even look at him and somehow somehow people began to mediate another lecturer was mediating and when he finally got to call the guy in they began to talk after insulting him and shouting and doing every kind of thing he said where are you from destiny helper is here in Koinonia sitting close to you hallelujah when my younger brother was very small he drank paint one day took a cup of paint and drank it and he fell down there fainted created commotion and everybody was just running helter skelter they took him to the hospital that was an opportunity because people came to greet hallelujah and there were certain people my father wanted to see who would not respond to him they came to greet my brother and finally some opportunities was trusting God for came by I'm teaching you wisdom tonight many of you will need to call your parents and tell them you stop insulting everybody that comes it doesn't matter what they have done God can still use them Are some of you here there are people that you can never look eyeball to eyeball with you swear as a tear Jesus comes because of what you did to my mother because of what you did to my father they gave us one thirty thousand to share my my young my elder brother gave it to K and when we go punish you for as long as I live calm down do you know that one day a door can be open I pray every time and I tell God there are destiny partners that are attached, destiny helpers attached to this ministry. There are destiny helpers attached to my life. There are destiny helpers attached to your life. Once again, let me use this last example and we'll pray. Two people, one stand here, one stand here. Anybody? You? My brother? Just stand there. Never forget this. The distance between you and your breakthrough is not see. I don't care what it is. Hear me. The distance between you it could be a carryover because you are praying and say oh God but they can't wave this thing. And you have done everything you know to do. One day God can just send someone and they will be discussing about you in the office and they say please help this person. They are straight. The distance between you is a destiny
after the grace here there are people who come and just look there are some people who just send me text messages with one scripture jokingly they did not even know I don't know them I don't have their numbers but that one scripture just gives an insight to something God has been attempting to communicate to me destiny help us we are going to cry unto God are you ready to pray God bless you rise up on your feet say the distance between me say it as loud as you can the distance between me and my breakthrough is a helper away say the distance between my family and their breakthrough is a helper away prayer point number one you are going to cry unto God and say Lord I, I repent of people I have neglected I, I want you to really pray and say people I have kicked out of my life destiny help us that would have taken me to a glorious level in my life by now lift your voice and pray Kapo people who would have given me relevant information those who would have connected me with help us lift your voice and pray some of our family members are struggling aimlessly because there are people who can help wine pressers bakers men who can take you to the king it's not as hard as it seems i am convinced it's a destiny help by way no matter what you need financial breakthrough a miracle a prophetic word direction in your life say lord i repent for neglecting destiny help us i've let them come and pass i refuse to activate defining moments in my life pray on behalf of your family say lord for my father for my mother for my brothers they would have gotten jobs by now they would have built houses by now they would have gotten contracts by now doors would have opened that terminal disease would have left by now my family would have been together by now but for the neglect of destiny help us hallelujah prayer point number two and i want you to pray this with all your heart he said i will restore to you you're going to pray and say lord let that cycle come back again in my life let that cycle I missed as a result of carelessness or pride or arrogance or insensitivity. Lift your voice. Say, Lord, let the helpers come again. Lord, let financial helpers come. Lord, let marital helpers come. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, let academic helpers come. The distance between you and your breakthrough is your wine presser is your wine baker it's not hard is there anything too hard for God to do I'm telling you in one day God can change your story in one day God can change the story of your family members restore pray restore for my family restore oh god opportunities that have been lost opportunities send them again oh god help us of destiny send them again reactivate breakthrough reactivate breakthrough hallelujah let me tell you a little story i have a friend listen to me i have a friend in abuja this guy went to Abuja, a poor, broke person with nothing but his faith. Hallelujah. And this guy had been praying and saying, Lord, change my story. Help me. This guy was crying.
crying, praying. People told him, and you said, stupid boy, you got up and came to Abuja. No house, no car, no nothing. This guy was praying, and one day, it always happens one day. You don't even know. That's why you must be prepared. He was just sitting down, and a friend called him. He said, where are you? He said, come quick. This guy just ran, and he entered the room, and he saw a big man and some people were talking. And he said, I wanted to involve you because God asked me to bless you. <laughs> and he sat down and the rich man was going to buy a plot of, buy some plots of land. 720 million. 720 million. And 10% goes to the agents. So they brought him. This guy became a millionaire overnight. He didn't do anything. They just brought him and counted the number of people. The 10% agency fee was what changed his life. Yet, there are many tongue-talking estate agents who have been in Abuja since 1990, since 1999, praying and running with complimentary cards. This guy was wearing pants. He wasn't wearing a suit. Pants! And his life changed overnight. Brothers and sisters, if you ever forget anything this night, remember that your prayer request is in the hands of a man. It takes God who is the father of spirits to connect the lines. And that's going to be our next prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, by the instrument of the prophetic, I call forth they that have been destined to take me to the next level to take my family make sure you are praying Lord prophetically pray those who will open doors of jobs doors of marriages doors of ministry doors of anointings doors of favor doors of lifting doors of success Doors of increase, doors of breakthrough. Make sure you are praying. Pray it with all your heart. Your family story can change. You have been praying and fasting. Could this be the message? Could this be the message? Pray. Say, Lord, whether in Lagos or Abuja or Kano or Sanfara, the United States, the Caribbean. By the prophetic power of the spirit let there be a connection orchestrate a meeting let there be a meeting pray pray god wants to take you from this level to another it's a year of supernatural exploits exploits by the spirit your story can change Activate defining moments. Activate breakthrough in your life. Come on, prophesy. I call them. They are coming into my life from the north, the east, the south. I pray for E and I. Destiny help us are coming. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. We receive them. Hallelujah. Let me give you one little story. Look at me. When Professor Madi was the Vice Chancellor of Amadou Bello University, many of you did not meet him. There was a gentleman who did very well, but he did not get admission. Hallelujah. And the guy just went, for reasons he could not explain, he went and sat down near the Senate in the night. Professor Madi had the culture of walking into students' hostels, walking around just to see what is going on. And when he walked, he saw the gentleman and he called him. He said, Are you sitting down here? He said, Sir, look at my wire results. Look at everything. But my catchment area is not there. They didn't give me admission. He said, You are such a brilliant boy. Do you know what he told him? He said, Go home and pack your load and come back. When he came back, that printed his admission letter. This is true. A confirmed story. Hallelujah. I know about 
a student who had been victimized for years till he was in 300 level. Whatever it is that happened, either his name or his matriculation number clashed. And what this guy was seeing was not his real CGPA. This guy would work so hard, but when the exams come out, he would not be it. And then one day, someone just came in and for whatever reason, the person decided to start cross-checking things. The next thing, they put on the notice board that they wanted to see him. When they called him, they said he should go and bring his results and his courses that he registered. Do you know, true life story, when they, this guy was uh, maybe around 1.7 something, by the time they corrected everything, he was supposed to be in 2-1. In all sincerity, my cousin, my cousin was a student in this school. It takes discernment. It takes discernment. Say, Lord, let me discern. They may not be my tribe. They may not be my friends. They may be the enemies of our family. But Lord, grace to discern. When you are about to use them to change our story. Hallelujah. Final prayer point. Now you are going to pray. And speak over your life. And tell yourself you are breaking through. And breaking forth on the left and right. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Prophesy. I break through from the left, the right, the east, the west. Oh, hallelujah. I activate breakthroughs. I establish it in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of prayer, I contend against every power of darkness come on pray pray against every satanic force pray against every power of darkness that wants to attempt to abort your breakthrough god wants you to smile god wants you to smile god wants you to smile he wants to encourage you he wants your life to be fruitful Satan get lost. Be lifted all ye gates. Let the family of Koinonia receive breakthroughs. I prophesy breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. Family breakthrough. Academic breakthrough. Spiritual breakthrough. Breakthrough in your job. Let your family members smile. I provoke it from the realm of the spirit. I provoke it.
from the heavens I activate the angelic I activate the angelic let angels begin to move to every family let angels begin to move over your academic angels move over your finances angels move over your family angels move I activate the operation of angels contend with the powers in the heavens and release breakthroughs for God's people let the angelic contend with the powers that delay that stop people from entering their prophetic breakthrough I release breakthroughs I release breakthroughs I release breakthrough I speak it in your life I send an anointing into your life a breaker anointing a breakthrough anointing I send it into your life I send it into your academics I send it into your family I send it into your finances those you do not know I cause them to arise and help you I cause them to arise and help you hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands everybody everywhere your gift is needed I command them to begin to talk about you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I activate breakthrough for you in the name of Jesus everywhere your gift is needed whoever needs your gift in Nigeria I stand as a servant of God I command a connection in the realm of the spirit beginning from tonight 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 in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for every one of your family members looking for a job my God and my King tonight let testimonies rise from this message no matter how long tonight let someone talk to somebody talk to somebody and talk to somebody and connect them for breakthrough in the name of Jesus for your family members I command help us those who will connect them to projects and contracts and opportunities yes they don't merit it but by the power of destiny help us I connect them to the breakthrough for the next level in the name of Jesus where you have cried academically I connect you to help us professors who will help you admin staffs who will help you admin staff who will help you members in the senate who will help you whether for accommodation whether for your result whether for missing script whether for your wayek whatever it is in the name of jesus as the senate and the faculty board members meet over your results and your performance may a strange man enter that meeting and advocate for you in the name of Jesus anywhere they want to turn down your family members or turn down anything let a strange man come we don't want to know the name let a strange call come let a strange connection come I prophesy it I release it to you in the name of Jesus I release testimonies 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 from this breakthrough experience beginning from tonight I command calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us calls from destiny help us connections with destiny help us they will travel and come and meet you you will meet them on the street they will come to your homes in the name of Jesus you will see them in your dreams God will connect you for every one of your family members that is supposed to be married and they are not married the husbands or the wives they are not in space they are here on earth Lord we pray tonight as a family by the power that is in the name of the resurrected Christ 
I pray, let help us lead partners to their mates in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We command supernatural marital connections in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We bind every devil. We bind every power that attempts to cause delay. We set them free from every curse and every yoke of bondage. Be released in the name of Jesus. say Lord bring them I believe you will hear fearful testimonies in this place as a result tonight I've shown you a very mighty secret don't forget it too soon hold it every time you are praying over something the answer is in the hands of another person stop beating about the bush every man and every authority can answer when God calls. Yours is just to pray that God will connect you. Hallelujah. You're here, you're not born again. Now is the time for you to have an experience with the Lord Jesus. Or you've given your heart to Jesus. This is the greatest of all breakthroughs. That you start a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, let this be that night where you will begin a new walk with the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity. Everybody keep standing. You're here and you've not given your heart to the Lord or you've given your heart to the Lord once but you found yourself derailing in the path of destiny. I'd like you to leave your seat and come out quickly. I want to pray with you. Is there any kind of person like that? Hallelujah. Please don't be afraid. You need to come out, leave your seat and come. Appreciate them. Someone is coming. Appreciate them. Don't remain in your seat. Appreciate them. Another brother is coming. They are coming. Appreciate them. This is the beginning of breakthroughs. Keep coming. Keep coming. Jesus is calling. Enough is enough. Keep appreciating them. They are coming. Thank you for coming. Lord, we celebrate you. Keep coming, brother. God bless you. God bless you. I see you. Sister, God bless you. God bless you. God bless as many of you who are coming. It's the beginning of a new journey. It's the beginning of a new journey. No devil will hold you. No devil will keep you. My sister, God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is why God brought you tonight. Keep coming. The Lord bless you. No matter what the challenge is, keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. The greatest way to activate breakthroughs in your life and to secure a life both in this realm and in the life to come is to give Jesus your heart one condemns you but tonight we want you to start a real journey i believe that the holy spirit brought you out by himself and i salute you for the courage hallelujah lift your right hand and pray after me everyone standing say lord jesus i come before you tonight unable to help myself i believe that jesus is lord over my life i confess my sins and i declare that jesus is lord I receive eternal life into my spirit from today I'm born again forward ever backward never Holy Spirit come and live in me make me a great tool in the hands of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus now let me pray for you father preserve these ones you brought them out by your spirit preserve them I pray that their salvation will last it will be genuine and Lord that they will begin to from grace to grace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I curse every devil of darkness that will want you to move back into whatever you were doing before you came to the Lord let this be a new beginning for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you so much for coming I want you to follow the ushers quickly they will have your details and tomorrow you will be meeting with Pastor Jakes by 7pm oh, that will not be possible Monday on Monday Monday 7 p.m. will remind you. Monday 7 p.m. you will meet at chapel and will follow you. Please appreciate them. Appreciate them. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Appreciate them. Thank you so much for coming. Very quickly, you're worshiping with us for the first time. 
I'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. If you're worshiping with us, appreciate them. They are coming. Come on, run like you know your destiny is opening up in a new and glorious way. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You'll never be the same. I assure you, God brought you here. Jesus is in this place. Appreciate them. Can you celebrate what God is doing? Thank you. Thank you, sisters. Thank you. You'll never be the same. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Koinonia. Meeting put together by Eternity Network International. How many of you were blessed tonight? You'll never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Saints of God, stretch your hands as you prophesy breakthrough. Lord, as a token, give them major breakthroughs in their lives. Let them know that God is at work in this place. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with a fresh hunger for God. We bless you with a fresh hunger beyond the breakthroughs that you will receive. A fresh hunger for the things of the Spirit. A fresh hunger for the presence of the Lord. Whatever challenge you came here with is swallowed up tonight. In the name of Jesus, go and experience unlimited breakthroughs by the hands of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you once again for coming. Write this down. God's system for activating your streams of income. I want to teach you the kingdom system. There is a Babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration ends you in penury or you will be rich but at the expense of your salvation you will be rich but at the expense of very important things in your life everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom and this is where men of god must balance i believe in in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas but please hear me you must be careful not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook line and sinker many men of god go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated i've i've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of god's word i don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is god's system for activating the streams of income let's hurry up proverbs verse 16 quickly it's a popular scripture we always talk about but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time what i'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life proverbs 18 verse 16 let's read on it says a man's gift please listen please pay attention a man's gift does what does two things what's number one it makes room for him is that true what's number two it brings him before a man's gift does two things for him it gives him opportunity and it gives him access write it down your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life it gives you opportunities and then it gives you access access entrance before the great a man's gift so how do you identify the streams of income in your life many people have been taught they so they teach you different businesses and they tell you just do this this no 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 no, no. there's no guarantee 
that because they gave you a good business idea you will succeed you see the mistake this is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot write this down you identify the streams in your life by looking at two things number one your gifts and abilities your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to your gifts and your abilities write it down number two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion these are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life one your gifts and your abilities two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion not just any problem you know they tell people search for problems there are problems all around Nigeria you go and try a problem that you don't have passion for and that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources is God helping us write this down every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income how true every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income And every ability you have is a potential stream look at David for instance almost every gift the Bible identifies in David later became a stream for him his ability to play right his ability to be faithful in service his leadership skill everything was utilized in his life I'm about to make a statement that is very striking Maybe controversial, especially for pastors. I want you to listen to me. Do not let men box you into one stream and stop you from exploring other streams. Don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream. If you are not careful, people can put you in a box. They know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that I want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials with great leadership potentials there are other streams of income that can find expression but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there. Why? Because people say you are a pastor. And the meaning of that is remain there, be poor there, and die there. This kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century. You cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset. Again. Or I am a civil servant. So when you call people, you say those who are civil servants, this side. And you see a mass of people like peace coming to this side. Those who are businessmen, this side. That thing is about to change in the 21st century. That concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur. Are you getting my point? There must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century. Are you getting blessed? Is God helping you? There are many pastors. I say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating God's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning 20,000 with five children right you can imagine 
what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he, the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed this has brought a lot of problems for people especially those in ministry listen to me every potential you have that god put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the lord without giving it expression every gift in you i plan in my life that every gifting and every potential his majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed praise the lord there are so many things that's why many pastors are poor that's why they are broke one of my greatest mentors dr miles munro a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society utilized his potentials as a pastor he was the senior pastor and the founder of bahamas faith ministry international and yet at the same time brothers and sisters he was a consultant for 16 presidents how many a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the, at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jet many of you may not know let me explain it to you what it means he he, he not own one aircraft boeing 737 no 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 own a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because the, there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them say it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up on steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it or don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay 30,000 they must be thieves necessarily with time even if they are conviction and you see that don't trivialize what I'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight Say after me in the name of Jesus. I am gifted. Shout it in the name of Jesus. There is a gift upon my life. There are graces upon my life. There are abilities upon my life. And I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. Even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life. Because there are other streams. Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? See, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, He called from. He called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was tending his father in law's sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak. Right? There are so many things. There are books to write. I have different thoughts on different areas. I can document my persuasions. There are all kinds 
kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up. So don't you see a man of God rich and just think it's church money or just think and think I have people not dashing their money. You see articles blackmailing men of God all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has, as though he's not supposed to be blessed. People are arguing and complaining about one jet, two jets. My goodness, I don't know what will happen by the time we come. If we need 100 jets, we will buy all of them. I guarantee you. Very unapologetically. See that? You can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity. It doesn't have to be by crooks. It doesn't have to be by pranks. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him four million dollars. Multiply that by 210 naira there about. That gives you the equivalent in naira because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million, I said, come on, give the money break. He didn't steal anybody's money. Why will I be worth 10 million, 20 million, 100 million and not live in a house? How much is 1.2? How much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million? Don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. They are tape ministry. The books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, are, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are walking in it. are still being developed. I will never be poor. It's not about being a preacher. It's about realizing that once there is a demand for what I do and I train myself in the ability to see, to do it. When you are sleeping, the wealthy people are awake studying seminars, doing a lot of things, right? And then we see them rich and we criticize them. Please, I want to say this coin on your phone today. Never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy be like what you resent. Anything you drive away from your life, you can never be like it. Honor is the seed for access. Hallelujah. I'm friends to many, by the grace of God, many wealthy people and many millionaires. I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions. balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing. Now, 
I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this. The trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No, no, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life. That's the reason why God fragmented himself into different aspects. You cannot know Rafa by studying Jaira. Jaira is a dimension itself. Rafa is a dimension itself. Sikenu is a dimension itself. Is that true? El Shaddai is a dimension itself. But all of those names belong to one person. I am. So he said, who do men say that I am? And they were calling different dimensions of him. As a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true that you do not stay on one place, you must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness, and generosity do you know why i'm telling you this because there are some things i may not be able to share here but see the business world is a lot different from ministry in the business world you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves as a man of god you can ruin your church in one moment right i know there was a situation that happened in in one church down in abuja this was one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of God but you must give them their financial capacities don't over pamper people in the name of kindness they will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity are you getting me many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things when things go wrong or it fails they will kill you they will write articles about you they will lock you up as a man of god and so let people take their responsibilities by themselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is God giving us wisdom? This is a mistake a lot of pastors have made. They come to church. Anybody just comes in and says, I'm a lawyer. I have some land. I am a this. I have that. And then the pastor comes and announces. And because people love the pastor, they now run around and come and say, this is our pastor, this and that and that. Or they raise money to buy church land all kinds of things please i'm telling us especially for men of god who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of god define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there now there are other platforms you can create like sunday adelaja who created a lot of business platforms if you want to do anything that is business in the church set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this not in the name of the church but at their own risk 
that way whatever happens the integrity of the church is preserved is God teaching us I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands but this is giving us wisdom especially for those of us who are leaders don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people that they are praying in tongues and they hug you you don't yet know their attitude towards money they will stab you and kill you it's God helping us let's continue so your streams of income should be around your giftings should be around your abilities your streams of income Now look up I want to teach you something please very important now write this word down time t-i-m-e write this word down time your life on earth is measured in time don't forget this your life on earth is measured in time that means whatever you give your time to you have given part of your life to the time you are giving your employer or your job, your office, is part of your life. You are giving to them. Write this down. Focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time. Focus. There is only limited time you have. Everybody has only 24 hours. You cannot have 25 hours in a day. So if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation, you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective. Wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time. Let me give you an instance. If I write a book right now, if I write one book, right, I communicate my thoughts, maybe books on, there are so many books that I have, I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me to begin to write books. I know many of them will be bestsellers because I will not just get up and write books. I will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them, I have the content, but what of the marketing, what of the publicity? Never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best. You will minimize mistakes. You will make instant progress. So I can write a book right now, for instance, and then release it. And I can be here preaching, and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore. Doesn't know me, has never seen me, may never see me, right? And then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because I'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas I can write on I can write on the anointing I can write on wealth and prosperity I can write on leadership all the areas that I know God has granted me grace in I'm just showing you how one stream now I can be here and be effective in koinonia another thing for instance if I build an estate you see that if I build an estate there are people renting I don't even know them I've never seen them for instance but I'm here teaching the word my time is being invested to the principal thing I've been called to do but there are challenges that are bringing me here. are you getting what I'm saying now very important if I teach assuming that we're selling our teachings imagine the hundreds of millions would have made by now on just the media ministry but God instructed us not to do that the impact is more important than the money one grateful person can bring what would have gotten in 10 years and bring it one day. This is the benefit. Every time you dispense value, you must be rewarded. Whether you sell it or you give it free, it's a law. So we are not at a loss at all. Now imagine that today's message, the media department will now package it, the wealthy place, volume one, volume two, volume three, right? And then maybe each of them is sold now you can imagine that and all of that is happening so people are buying it somewhere whereas you are still here 
as much as possible value your time your time is premium you must know that you cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything it's too much to give your life just for money no let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life I hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money you should chase after God chase after God seek it first the kingdom and seek it to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom that's what is meant by his righteousness here and he said all other things will be added let's hurry up when you give your time you give your life never forget that the reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary number one you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your your skill number two you are exchanging your time these are the two things that go for your salary you cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life because you're 24 hours if you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom imagine that i cannot come for koinonia now and say because i'm trying to do something they are looking for money somewhere still i'm failing in my assignment it doesn't matter how much money i make so you have to be careful so that you don't just that's the language of those we call hustlers hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money right they have, their time is valueless to them so they can give it away just for anything my time is precious to me because my life is measured in time God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and I focus on doing the things 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 Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.